Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am your brother Nuh. I am a khatib filmmaker and student of knowledge from the so-called SoCal area. I am moderating the session, What in the World? A uh, 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 beautiful speaker, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman uh, Khan. He's going to be talking about the delusions of this world, the delusion of this life. Uh, what a what a timely topic! Again, also, wow, this is this is this is just hitting on everything that's 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 going on today. Um, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Khan, he is a graduate from the Islamic University Faculty of Sharia. He is currently the chairman of Sharia Council of Ikna and a member of the Council of North America. He is also the director of programs in the Tarabia Department of Ikna. Sheikh, we appreciate you, and uh, we thank you for joining us, and uh, we look forward to uh, your presentation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi amma ba'd, my dear viewers, brothers, sisters. In these 15 minutes uh, allotted to me, I would like to address this topic of delusion in this life uh, in three parts. One is understanding what this delusion is, who determined what is delusion, and who determined what is reality. The second point I want to address is what happens when people are deluded and turned away from reality and the need to separate between what is delusion and what is reality. And the third and final part, I would like to offer some solution and how to save ourselves, how to save others from falling into the delusions of this life. So the first point is understanding delusion. Understanding delusion uh, we want to see that from a spiritual uh, point, uh, standpoint. And a delusion is a belief that is clearly false uh, and which indicates a deviation in that deluded mind and his thought process of thinking. The key feature here of delusion is the degree to which the person is convinced of what he believes in that is true, that he believes that this is tr so true. And such a deluded person is absolutely convinced that the delusion is real, regardless to whatever evidence there is to the contrary. And we know the opposite of delusion is reality or haq. So who determines what reality, what haq is? and what is delusion or misguidance. Uh, the one who determines that, what, reality, what delusion is and what reality is, is none other than the Creator Himself. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, by way of advice, guidance, commandments, warning, similitude, He has given us a book that is clear, very clear, that tells us what is this reality. We have sent down to you the book to make everything clear. So Allah did not leave it on Sigmund Freud and Socrates and Plato or anybody else. He, Allah, the Creator Himself, made in his book, Al-Quran, everything clear for all things and a guidance and mercy and glad tidings for those who surrender to him. And so in a most precise verse, Allah tells us the reality and purpose of this life. I have not created the jinn and the mankind except that they worship me alone. And to carry out this task of surrendering to Allah, 
obeying Allah, he has sent his prophets, he has sent messengers, he has sent revelation, the last of which is Al-Quran. And in a nutshell, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained this reality as every time he gets up for tahajjud, he would say aloud something that would really ought to ring home to each one of us what this reality is in which we as Muslim must hold on to. And he's saying to Allah, Allahumma antal haq. Oh Allah, you are truth. Wa wa'aduka haq. And your promise is truth. Wa liqa'uka haq. Meeting you is reality. Wa qawluka haq. Your word, your speech is reality. Wa jannatu haq. Wa naru haq. Paradise is reality. Hell fire is reality. Wa nabiyuna haq. Prophets are reality. Wa Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam haq. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, is reality. Wa sa'atu haq. And the hour is reality. And the hadith con continues. It's a, it's a long hadith, but what is important here is the fact that he is verbalizing. As a messenger of Allah, he is verbalizing on a nightly basis, on a daily basis, that these are the realities of life. And so how often do we even go through this exercise by saying, oh Allah, you are the truth. Your words are truth. Your message is truth. Your book is truth. Meeting you on the day of judgment is truth. Malakul maut is truth. Death is truth. Hereafter is truth. Sirat is truth. Giving our, the, 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 the hasher is truth. Our receiving our books on the day of judgment to see what we have done. All of that is truth. How often do we go through that exercise that it anchors us to what is reality. And then Allah explains by way of similitude. What is this reality and what is the delusion? ثُمَّ يَكُونُ حُطَامًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَالرِّضْوَانِ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاءُ الْغُرُورِ No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that no about Allah, that the life of this world is nothing but amusement and diversion and adornment and boasting to one another and competition in increased in wealth and children and perhaps as I was hearing the sister, these days people are competing how many likes you have or how many uh, people, followers you have on your, on your social media and so forth. And so we boast about these things. Then Allah give that similitude, like the example of a rain, which the plant growth pleases the tillers, the farmers. Then it grows up it dries and then you start seeing it yellow and then it becomes scattered debris and in the a hereafter is severe punishment and forgiveness from Allah and his pleasure and what is this worldly life except the enjoyment of delusion and we ask ourselves how many people are stuck with amusement and play and do not care what the Creator demands from them. How much money, time, and effort is spent in the world today in entertainment, whatever sort of entertainment, it is trillions of dollars in the whole entertaining world. And how many people have failed by running after these delusions in this world? Prophet Wasallam says, Wallahi ma dunya fil akhira illa mithlu ma yaj'alu ahadukum isba'ahu hadihi wa ashara yahya bi sababa fil yami fal yanzur bima tarja. So the Prophet Sallallahu said the life in this world compared to the hereafter is like one of you would stick his finger and the narrator Yahya he just dipped his hand like that as if you dip your hand in an ocean, what does this bring out from that ocean? This is what the comparison is. 
what does this bring back? That's what this dunya is compared to the hereafter. So which one basically are we working for? Are we deluded by this little droplet on this finger or are we aiming for the ocean that Allah has so uh, detailed for us in uh, mentioned in so much detail for us in Al-Quran? The second point is the reality of those who avoid those delusions. In other words, he recognized Allah is truth, Islam is haq, Quran is haq, Muhammad is haq. And so those are the people that when they realize what this haq is, Allah talks what happens to them. On the other hand, those who reject that haq and come up with their own deluded mind which they think is reality Allah mentions as for him who transgressed and prefer the life of this world verily his abode is in the hellfire may Allah save us from that such a person has made his desires its ultimate goal and uses his time and resources for nothing more than his self-gratification, comfort, looking and running after just wealth for the sake of getting more, eat, drink, procreate, and feel a sense of just, I'm safe, I want to be powerful, enjoyment of this life. Isn't this what Allah describes as the, the way of the animals that they also do, as Allah tells us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and surely we have created many of the jinn and the mankind for hellfire. They have hearts with which they perceive not and understand the truth. They have eyes with which they see not the truth. They have ears wherewith they hear not the truth. They are like cattle, nay, even more astray than cattle. Indeed, they are the heedless ones. As for those who recognize what this reality is and strive for that, But as for him who feared standing before his Lord, because he knew this is haq, the purpose of this life, brothers and sisters, this is that moment when people will say, oh, I wish I had another chance. Or when death comes upon them, they say, oh Allah, Send me Rabbi Rji'oon. La'alli hatta idha hadara ahadahun maud kala Rabbi Rji'oon. La'alli a'malu salihan fi matarak. You know, hatta idha ja'a ahadahum al maud. When maud comes upon them, then they say, Oh God, oh, please, one more time, one more time. Now the reality strikes. Their whole life was in delusion. Now the reality strikes. So those who can see through all this reality, as for him who fears standing before his Lord and restrain himself from impure evil desires and lust. Verily, paradise will be his abode. And we ask Allah for all of us to have this paradise. And the final point I want to address is the solution. Saving ourselves, saving others from falling into the delusions of life. First, that we recognize what our Creator tells us about the chief deceiver, Iblis. Ya ayyuhan nas, inna wa'dallahi haq, fala taghurannakumul hayatu dunya, wala yaghurannakum billahi al-gharur. O people, O mankind, all of mankind, the promise of Allah is true. Allah is, the promise of Allah is haq. As we said, as the Prophet would say, Waduka Haq. Allah is saying that His Wad is Haq. Meeting Him will be, be true. And His promise is true. So do not let the life 
of this world deceive you, nor be deceived by the deceiver. And the deceiver here is Iblis. We are living in an age of deception. And so one of the things to be able to find or find solution out of this deception is that we must sit and examine how much deception are there in our modern age, in our time, in our society, in this world, political deception, economic and financial deception, monetary system deception, education and social deception. All of these deceptions encourage man from cradle to grave to develop himself in this so-called quality of life in order to not only become slaves of this system and to get rewarded out of it, but to spend his entire life in pursuit of these worldly goals. And we have seen from individuals to nations how many of them devour each other in realizing these worldly goals. As both of the speakers before me, they gave so much so many examples of what we are going through in this in this society in which we are in and so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is telling us it's a hadith reported by uqba ibn amr he said lastu akhsha alaykum an tushriku ba'di walakinni akhsha alaykum Oh, I have five minutes. <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry, I have to go back and forth to, yeah, so, so the, the, uh, I'm concluding here. Last to aksha alaykum and to shriku baadi walakinni aksha alaykum wa dunya anta nafasu fiha wa taqtatilu fatuhliku kama halaka man kana qablakum. And faqala uqba fakanat akhir ma ra'aytu rasul sallallahu sallam ala al-member. La ilaha illallah. He said, this was among the last advice of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I'm not afraid that you will start worshipping idols. Commit shirk, open shirk, after my demise. But I'm afraid that you will vie with one another. You will compete with one another for the life of this world. And you will compete and fight with each other and you will be destroyed as those before you would, were, were destroyed in the process of doing that. And Uqba said this was the last time I saw Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi remember. Brothers and sisters, dear viewers, a solution is that we have to balance what is in this world, we can't forget this world. This world is not that we hang hang up this world. No, this world is part of life, is to balance between this earth, world and the hereafter. But seek what Allah has bestowed upon you in in this life look for that seek for that in the halal way in the way that he has prescribed for you as shown to us by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but remember the home of the akhirah the home of the akhirah is what is there and be good and do good and seek not to do mischief on earth for allah does not live like those who are are mischief makers and finally we have to understand that part of this reality is that we have to spread this message we have to do dawah we have to engage and so a conference like this mashallah if it can reach out to as many people and we engage all of us individual and community and muslims here and everywhere must be engaged in dawah in order to bring about this understanding of what delusion of life is and what reality is. May Allah help us to be on the reality always and save us from the delusions of this life. Amen. Amen. Alhamdulillah. Amen. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, for your, your beautiful message. 
uh, I would like to say assalamu alaikum to everybody who's watching. And I thank you for tuning in. I thank you, Sheikh, for uh, enlightening us on the problems that are going on. The next question that uh, we have is for Sheikh uh, Abdul Rahman Khan. Uh, and this question is about the topic that you brought up, the delusions of the world. Now, a lot of people, they connect the delusions of the world with entertainment. Uh, they say, you know, I'm not deluded by the world. I just like to entertain myself. I just... I just do a little bit. I just, you know, I time myself. So how do you, and I know you gave some examples, uh, but I, I would like to, for you to expound a little more. How do you think that we can tackle this in our houses and with our families without going overboard? Uh, yes, Bismillah, very good question. Um, there is a balance. There is a balance in, in whatever we do and even like sports, for example. But do we make that a priority for our Islamic work? Do we make excuses that I cannot pray at the masjid? I cannot uh, donate? I cannot. Do I make these entertainment excuse for when I'm called upon to do what I'm really supposed to do? And this is a question we all have to ask ourselves. If you are going to pray between commercials in a Super, super Bowl game and your eyes are fixated on the, on, the, on the screen because these days people don't even want to miss the commercials and you are saying Allah Akbar and watching there, this is really not, this is mixing up. There are too much of mixing up and one of the things that we have to do is to be able to separate between what is delusion and what is haq. And what is the right of Allah? We cannot make excuse by, oh, it's just, you want to get involved in these things and do it. Do it Do it yourself. Get outside. And as uh, I think the sister uh, mentioned and previous uh, speakers also mentioned, that this is a, a great time for, you know, uh, uh, being at home, being with family, doing things around. And so television, uh, uh, social media, these things are not always a good substitute for the time and resources that we have. I'm not saying it's haram, but I'm just saying that we have to balance to, uh, to the point that we cannot give up our responsibility. If you spend two hours on watching something that is just entertainment, can you not spend 10 minutes in talking to someone about Islam? A question we have to ask ourselves. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. And Sheikh uh, Abdul Rahman, thank you. Uh, 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 we respect you as a leader in the community. And may Allah uh, bless and protect us and keep us uh, rightly guided in the Salat al Mustaqim. Akhudu Kholi Hada, wa staghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa li sa'ala al Muslimin, wa staghfiru fa innahu huwa ghafoorur rahim. Assalamu alaikum.